Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Alfred from Practical Code Academy. And in today's project, uh, I'm going to show you how you can use JavaScript to filter any list. And the list that we're going to create together is going to look like this. Here is a, just a very simple list of all frameworks and languages, programming languages that uh, existing for web development. Uh, I created them uh, using JavaScript, and I, I uploaded them dynamically to the HTML. And now we can search for any item in this list. For example, if I put an A, it will return all the items that include having a letter A. If I try to be more specific and put A, C, it will tell me, well, you're searching for React. And if I try to put something not in this list, for example, like AS, AS, it will tell me that this item is not found on this list. So I'm going to show you how you can create uh, the list in the JavaScript and, and load it dynamically in the HTML file. Also, I'm going to show you how you can filter this list. I hope you're going to like this video and let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna start by creating a folder for the project. I'm gonna call it filter list. Open it with Visual Studio Code. Create my files. I'm gonna create an HTML file, in that case, index.html. I'm gonna create the JavaScript file. I'm gonna call it main.js. And finally, I'm gonna do the styling sheet file, which is style.css. Inside my uh, HTML file, I'm gonna generate a boilerplate using Emmet, exclamation mark tab. I'm gonna call it filter list. Just change my title here. Inside the body itself, I'm going to put an h1 tag, which is the title of the page. Just going to put something like filter ring a list. OK, now I need a container. So I'm going to do a class of container. A div was a class of container. So I'm going to do a div. I'm going to give it a class of container. Inside my div here, I'm going to have my input field with a type text. And I'm going to give it a placeholder. And I'm going to type search. So this is going to be the, the search input from the user. Also going to give it a class here. I'm going to call it filter input. Next, I'm going to have another div under the input. This div will be my output. So if I want to output the list from the JavaScript file, I'm going to be output it inside this div. I want to, if I want to output any error messages, I'm going to push it to that div. So I'm going to give it a class of output. So this is going to be my output div. I'm going to output anything inside this div. And this is basically, that's it. I'm having the, the input field here and whatever I want to show the user is going to be in this output div. Uh, before we close this file, let's, uh, let's link our script file. So I'm going to do source main.js and also the styling sheet. I'm going to link it here. Style.css. And that's it. We're done from the index.html or the HTML markup here. I'm going to start with the JavaScript file. here and I'm going to create my list and my list actually is just an array so I'm going to create a constant I'm going to call it list and it's just an array so you can put anything you want here in this list in that case I'm going to do html5 yes that's three angler two react node.js, view.js, php, 
And of course, let's not forget JavaScript. And let's put bootstrap. Okay, this is my list. You can, of course, you can add more items. Uh, it's very scalable. You can take out items, you can edit them. Uh, as you can see, I'm not editing this list here, hard coded inside my the HTML file. I'm just putting everything dynamically inside the JavaScript file. We did that here. Let's get hold on these items from the DOM. I need to get hold on my input here, which I give it a class of filter input, and also my output field here. So I'm going to create constant. I'm going to call it output, which is going to use document dot query selector. Case is going to be my output. I'm going to create another constant. I'm going to call it search document dot query selector, and in that case will be the filter input. Now I get hold on the items in the DOM, and I create a constant. Now the next step, I want to when the window loads or the or this page loaded, let's load it for now using live server. As you can see here, uh, there is nothing. It's just the input and my output is empty. When it's loaded, I wanna put the data that inside my array here on the screen on the output. To do that, I can access the window object, add an event listener to it, and then the event that I'm looking for is the DOM content loaded. So when the DOM content loaded, I want to run uh, a function. In that case, I'm going to call the function load list because this is the function that's going to be responsible for loading the list. Of course, you can change the name of whatever you want. So I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it load list. So for the load list function, the first step, I'm going to create a variable. In that case, I'm going to create a variable using let. And this variable will hold a, a, a temporary values. So I'm going to call it temp. So it's let temp. And in that case, we'll hold the UL tag for this, uh, the opening UL tag for this list. So it's going to be UL. And I'm going to give the UL class, which in that case, uh, I'm going to give it list items. Now, this is the opening tags. And I'm not adding the closing tags because I need, this is the opening tag. Then I'm going to need to loop through this list and create a list item for each one of them. And I'm going to do it using for each. Now, for each, so I'm going to access the list dot for each, for each item here. And I'm going to create a function here, which is returning an item. I'm going to add to the temporary variable this markup, which is in that case is going to be li. I'm going to give it a class uh, list item. And here I'm going to use the dollar sign and the curly brackets to put each item because we're going to loop through them. We'll take one by one from each item, and I want to create an li for each li element for each item in this list. So I'm going to pass the item here, and also I'm going to close my li. After I loop through all of them and created the li for every single element using for each, now it's time to close this ul tag here. So I'm going to do the temp, and I'm add, going to add to it, so it's plus equal, the closing tag of the ul. Now at this point, my, my temporary variable here, having all the markups that I wanna push to the output element in the DOM. So all I need to do right now is just access the output dot inner HTML and make it equal to the temp. And if I save this and I go and take a look here, as you can see now, all the lists dynamically loaded to the HTML file. So this part is done here. Now let's work on uh, the styling a little bit and we're gonna get back to the JavaScript. For the styling, 
I'm gonna reset the browser default, which is padding zero, margin zero, box sizing border box. Next for the body itself, the body element or the body tag, I wanna do the background color or the background in that case, not the color, linear gradient. I wanna do 45 degree. And I'm gonna to wanna to go from purple to Dodger blue. On the, for the font family, I wanna change the font to Arial. And let me open it side by side here. And as you can see now, because I didn't give a, a height for the body, you'll see that it keep repeating the linear gradient. And to, to fix this, we can give a height to the body, 100 view height. And notice once you give the height, now it's nice and smooth. And this purple a little bit dark, so I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter, change it to X value here. Okay, much better. That's it for the body, let's go for the container. For the container, I'm gonna give it a max width, 1100 pixels, yep. I'm gonna also do margin, up on bottom zero, left and right, auto, to center it in the screen. Next, I'm going to give it a padding, which is going to be uh, top and bottom 2 rem. And let's do left and right 2 rem too. So we're going to do 2 rem. Okay. Also for the box shadow, I'm going to do 0 pixel, 5 pixels, 10 pixels, RGPA of 0, 0, 0, 0 0.7 as opacity. And we get this. Uh, box shadow and this is actually it's in the center of the screen To see it you can let's make the max width here 900 Now I'm going to change the background color Which is going to be EEE -E -E. Okay, I'm going to do also border uh, Border radius in that case I'm going to do 10 pixels Make it a little bit rounded so for the H1, which is the header here, I'm gonna give it a color, white, margin bottom, two rem. Also, I need uh, font size. I'm gonna make the font a little bit bigger using three rem. Let's put it also in the center. So text align, center, Actually, I don't need the margin bottom. I just need the margin. I'll put top and bottom 50 pixel. And left and right zero since we center it. And that's going to push the title a little bit down. Next for the input field. Uh, we want to do the width 100%. Outline. None, margin bottom, two rem, height, give it a little bit height, 45 pixels, and the padding, gonna do 0 0.5 rem, top and bottom, and two rem, left and right. Okay, also we need to do a border, none and border, actually border radius. In that case, I'm gonna give it a border radius of, let's try 10 pixels. Yep, however, not uh, the border, I'm not gonna keep it none. I'm just gonna give it one pixel solid of light gray color, which is CCC. Okay, that's look better. Now let's style this list. And to style this list, I'm gonna target the class list items. I'm gonna do list style none to take out the bullet points. The border will be one pixel solid, the light gray color, which is CCC. Okay. Border radius, it's gonna be 10 pixels as well. So it's gonna be rounded. Now I want to target each list item. 
and for each list item the color will the background color will be white and also batting one rem and what else we need we need a uh, border bottom one pixel solid and in that case I'm gonna also use the light gray okay notice here the rounded uh, for the border is actually they they are it's not rounded the white color will be on top of it to fix this problem we can in the list items itself when we adding the border here around everything and what is the corner uh, of the border here sup supposed to have border radius 10 pixels to fix it in the list items here I'm gonna do overflow hidden so in that case this white overflow will be hidden and if I save that now as you can see the corners look fine so I want to access the last child here of my list items I'm gonna do pseudo selector last child and for the last child I want to do border bottom none and now as you can see we only have no border bottom we're gonna have only one pixel which is coming from the list items here because we're surrounding everything by a border of one pixel well this will fix this now when I hover over them I wanted to highlight them or, or, or change the background color as simple each list item when I hover over it I'm gonna do background color in that case you can do like a dark gray and also you have a color of white, which is FFF. And also the cursor, I'm gonna make it a pointer. And now when I hover over each item, as you can see, the background change. You can do a little transition here. Let's do the transition. So for each item, I can do transition of all, because in that case, I'm changing the background color and the front color which is 0.3 seconds and now as you can see that transition working in action now if I try to search for anything it's not gonna work out because we need the JavaScript and implement this feature to this list we just uh, displaying the list right now dynamically from the JavaScript so to do that we got to get back to the JavaScript file here and I'm gonna create a function another function that will call filter this filter will take an argument in that case an event object and technically what we want to do when the user start typing anything here start typing n m whenever he type the press the keyboard we want to get the value of whatever he entered where we're going to get it through the event object here and we want to compare it if it exists on our list or not so let's take it step by step so first I'm gonna create the event listener and the event listener we're looking for in that case I want to access this search which is the input here or the input field search on the user and I'm gonna add an ev add event listener when the user input something so I'm gonna use the input uh, event I want to run the following function and we're gonna capture the event object here you can call it anything e or event whatever you call it that's how you're gonna use it in that case I'm gonna call it e let's console log dot log e and here I'm gonna inspect let's do it responsive okay let's do the console here now when I try to type anything as you can see every time I enter a character because I'm, I'm looking for the input I will get back this event uh, input event so I'm gonna be capturing this input event 
in the E and I'm going to console log it. And if you open it, this it's, it's an object which having multiple uh, properties here. And we're interested in the target. As you can see the target here, you can go for the value target value is whatever the user enter from his keyboard so this is what we interested in so if you want to see what is the user enter we have to access the e which in that case the event the input event access the target property and we interested in the value of it so if i save this and now i enter something as you can see now, every time I enter one character, I will get back the whole string, whatever the user entered. So this is how I'm going to capture what the user entered. So I'm going to pass this. Now I'm going to put my filter here. This is the function that will be called. I have it here down. And I'm going to... That's it. You don't need to put the E here. It eventually will capture the event here. So if I do console the log e dot target dot value should be the same. So if I save, as you can see, it is pretty much the same. But however, I'm gonna add something here. I wanna whatever the user enter, I wanna turn it to a lower case. So for example, if we type a capital, we're gonna get it as capitals. It doesn't matter. I, I, I don't care what if you type it in capital or small letters. I want to turn it to small letters. or So I want to turn it to lowercase. So for that, I'm going to use two lower case function. It's a built-in function or built-in uh, method for JavaScript. So if I save that, open it here. Now try to type in anything in the caps. As you can see, it will turn to a lower case okay we was able to get whatever the user enter how we can convert that to whatever we have here in the list that's actually pretty easy so the first step let's follow the same procedure we did here i'm going to create a temporary variable i'm going to put nothing next i'm going to create a constant I'll call it result. So I'm this variable constant result technically will hold it just is simply an array that will hold any matching items in the list from whatever the user entered and from his keyboard. So to do that, I need to access the list and I want to filter it. So I'm going to use filter function here or filter uh, method and I'm going to return the item each item first before I do the comparison I want to turn it to a lowercase because as you can see my list here might have a upper cases so I want to turn each item in my list to a lowercase so I'm going to also to lowercase function and it's a function you need to add the opening and closing parentheses and after I turn it to a smaller case each item here I want to check if whatever the user typed in is it include in that uh, item or not. For example, if he enter edge, I want to check if the edge is included in first item or not. And I'm going to do the same for the second and the third because it's looping here. So that's very easy. You can use the includes function. So does it include e dot target whatever the user entered, which is e dot target dot value dot to lowercase and that's it this is actually the filter uh line that we're going to use for this pro project so for example if i do console dot log and now i want to show the result array as i told you it will return an array and let's do here edge as you can see if i type edge it will return an array telling you, hey, there is two matches here, items in this list that having the letter H. 
The first one is HTML5 and the second one is uh, PHP. If I put an A here, as you can see, it's Angular, React, JavaScript, and Bootstrap having everything. And if it's, if it's like this, it will return everything because it's, it's technically an empty. Okay, what if I enter something like this? This is not inside the list. I will get an empty array. And this is what we're gonna use to check if there is uh, whatever the user searching for is not in the list. Okay. So now we know what is the result is. Now we need to check for it. So if result array dot lens is bigger than zero, I want to show it to the screen. And pretty much I'm going to use the same code I used here. Uh, however, I need to change. And instead of looping through the list, I want to loop through the result array. And I don't want to output it here directly. I'm going to output it later. I'm just putting the temporary variable, fill it with the data that I want to show to the user. Else, if it's not found in, the, in, in this result array, what I want to do is fill the temporary variable with a div with a class of no item. And I can say no item found. And to close my div tag, okay. So if I find the result, I fill my temporary variable with all the markup that I need. And if I didn't find it, I also will fill my mark the temporary variable with the markup showing that it's not found. Now I have the temporary variable now having the markup that I need. All I need now, just show it in the output div uh, that we have in the markup. So I'm gonna access the output dot inner HTML will be equal temp. Either the temp now having the error message or if it's having the actual data. And this is pretty much it for the JavaScript file. Now we can check back here and we can type something. As you can see now, it's showing no item found. If you try to clear, okay, it looks like it's not searching. Let's see what is the problem. Yep, because we put the let here, we already defined the temp, temp here. So I don't need to add a, create a new one, just like this. I already created top here in line 29. I just need updating the value of it here. Uh, let's now search for something. Here it's working. And it doesn't matter if it's if it's a lowercase or uppercase. So if I put the lowercase edge, I'll still get the same results. If I put the uppercase angular, if I put something that's not found, it show not found. However, I need to style this a little bit so I can go to the style. And now I want to access the no item class because this is the class that I give it here for the div that's showing no item found. I give it no item class. And for that, I'm going to give it border one pixel solid CCC. Also, I'm going to do some padding, one rem. I do border left five pixels solid red background color and the pink color will be red text align center border radius five pixels look nice you can you, definitely you can just change the font a little bit so I'm gonna do font size 1.2 rem make it a little bit bigger and that's pretty much it now we have our list or filtering list using JavaScript working let's give it one more try let's close this now and as I deleting right now as you can see now 
the E and G will have this item, the A will have this items, and now we can search anything. So for example, if I search for dot, it will give me node.js and view.js. If I search for J, it will tell me, the, it will return all the items that having the J on them. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you liked today's video. And if you do like it, hit the like button. If you not subscribed to our channel, definitely subscribe now. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.